Hello friend, welcome back. My name is Becky Verdu and today we are preparing an Easter feast. We are at my mom's house today. If you missed going shopping with me, my mom was supposed to be back in town, but a couple things just didn't work out the way that they were supposed to. So she is not in town to prepare today's Easter feast. So I kind of figured, hey, I've got the day I can help. I can prepare the feast. We were supposed to do this together, but now it's you and I in the kitchen. Hopefully she'll be here before the actual dinner, but today is going to be a good day. We have, you can see right there, all of my recipes prepped. I've got two pans here heating up. The first thing we're going to start with is a lemon poppy seed cake with a raspberry jam filling and cream cheese frosting. So we're celebrating Easter this coming weekend and my sister-in-law's birthday. And this is the cake she requested. So this is the cake we're making. Normally, I would open a jar of homemade raspberry jam and I went down into my pantry to grab one and we were all out. So we are just gonna make a raspberry jam right now. It's gonna be super easy. I'm gonna start with two packages of raspberries. I just went shopping earlier today and these have thawed just a little bit, just in the time from going to the grocery store to coming to my mom's house. I'll share with you all the recipes we're gonna be making. I'm gonna pull out this garbage can so as I need to throw things away, because I think we're making seven recipes, I can just top, toss the things in the garbage can that I need to toss in the garbage can. My mom has been out of town for a few weeks now and her Christmas cactus was looking a little wilty. So I went ahead and got that washed, not washed, watered for her. So I have the oven preheated to 350 because the cake is one of the first things we are gonna be making today. And another thing we're gonna be starting with is our protein. I just purchased, not that long ago, a whole hog from a local farmer. And I knew that I wanted to make a stuffed pork loin for Easter. So I requested that the pork loin be deboned and in one piece, we are going to be making a stuffed pork loin. So I actually need to get the sausage cooking, but I figured I would share with you all these recipes that we're gonna be making today. I did go ahead and number them in order that we're gonna be making them in because I just needed to give myself a little bit of sanity. The first thing we're gonna be making is the lemon poppy seed cake with cream cheese frosting. Now this recipe does not have a raspberry jam that goes along with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that up using my previous knowledge of how to make jam. I also wanna get the sausage cooking for the bacon wrapped sausage stuffed pork tenderloin. Now I did go shopping today, but I did forget the breadcrumbs. So my dad is on his way and he will bring breadcrumbs so we can finish the stuffing, but I can get the pork prepared and the sausage cooking for that. Then we are going to make up our cheesy potatoes or funeral potatoes. We are going to make an easy asparagus tart. I'm not gonna bake this today, but I'm gonna prepare it today. I'll link all these recipes down below if you want to try them yourself. We are also going to be making, but not today, the day of the party, hot cross buns. You will see it though, all in one. Hot cross buns, and I'm gonna adapt this recipe. Or I should say, I'm gonna do half of it the way it is exactly written with the cinnamon and raisins. It actually calls for sultanas, but I couldn't find those at the store, so I just bought raisins. And then the other half, because I needed to double it for the amount of people that are gonna be at this party, I'm gonna do orange cranberry. Because honestly, I think that most people in my family would prefer orange cranberry over cinnamon raisin but I'm gonna make both and we will see what people like. Now, I'm also going to be, I put on the bottom here six because I won't make the cream cheese frosting until the day of the party. Today, we are going to make the raspberry jam, the cake, and then we will assemble the cake the day of the party. Or maybe when my mom gets here, she'll assemble it the day before the party. I'm not sure. Follow along and see how this unfolds. So we've got our raspberries cooking away. I do need to add some sugar to that. So I just pulled out my mom's sugar and I'm not going to measure this per se. I'm gonna put maybe about half a cup, maybe a little bit more. I took this pan off the heat because I did not yet put anything in it. But now what I'm gonna do is get three pounds of sausage cooking. And this is going to be for the stuffing for the pork tenderloin. 
If you're new, my name is Becky and I wanna welcome you. If you've been here before, welcome back. I greatly appreciate every single one of you who takes time out of your day to hang out with me in the kitchen. I'm glad you're here. Well, I was supposed to be here with my mom, you and I, and unfortunately because of extraneous circumstances, my mom couldn't be here. So I just wanna say thank you for being here so that I'm not all alone in the kitchen. So we're gonna get this cooked up. And if cooking big feasts for a lot of people is something you enjoy, then I welcome you to subscribe because we do a lot of cooking around here. So I'm gonna get that starting to cook. My dad is not here right now, but he will be here in a little bit. And he asked if there's anything he could do to help prepare for this big cooking day at my mom's house. And I asked if he could have the dishwasher unloaded for me, that would be fantastic because then as I cook, I can just get things directly into the dishwasher. And he was able to do that for me, which was amazing. And the reason I'm cooking this at my mom's house and not my house is because we are having the party at my mom's house. And I figured it would be easier for me just to come back and forth instead of having to pack up all this food if I cooked it at my house and then have to bring all the food here. So that is why we're doing the cooking here. So now let's get going on making the cake. I already preheated the oven, but I think before I actually do that, I should probably stir the jam, which is already starting to sizzle. These raspberries smell incredible. They smell like they were just picked. And I'm gonna start breaking up some of this sausage. I'm just going to just pull out quite a few of the ingredients we need. I brought quite a few things from my house because my mom hasn't been here for a few weeks and so I wasn't exactly sure all the things that she would have. Things that are, I assume she would have sugar, flour, baking powder, baking salt, but fresh ingredients like eggs and milk and lemon juice, things like that. I went ahead and brought those things because I wasn't sure if she would have them. So I just got the last ingredient out I need for the cake and I got my cake pans out. I need three eight inch cake pans. My mom has, I know somewhere in here, she's the one that put me onto it. I have to find them. Oh, they're right here. <laughs> As my grandma would say, if it was a snake, it would have bit me. Parchment paper that are already cut to the appropriate size. So I'm gonna prepare these cake pans before I actually make the cake. So as soon as I make the cake, they are ready to go. That's too small. Uh-oh. Maybe she doesn't have any eight inch ones left. Maybe she only has nine inch. Nope, that's eight inch right there, okay. I thought that might have been a nine inch one. My mom only has one left that is eight inches, but that's okay. I can go ahead and cut the other ones to fit. So I am going to put that on my list of things to pick up for my mom because I was the one that found that she no longer has that size. I figured if I cut off a quarter inch from one quarter of this, then that would equal one inch all the way around, and that worked out. This is boiling away, so I wanna taste it to see if it needs any more sugar, because if it does, this would be the good time to add it. Thinking. That has a nice tartness to it. It's got a little bit of sweetness. I think it needs just a little bit more sugar. I'm just gonna put about that much more in there. Now I'm gonna make just a cornstarch slurry. I have a little bit of water here and some cornstarch. I just text my sister-in-law and asked her if she likes raspberry seeds or if she wants me to take the raspberry seeds out and make a jam instead of a jelly. Excuse me, to make a jelly instead of a jam because right now with the seeds in and the pulp and everything, it would be considered a jam. If I remove the seeds and pulp, then we would have a jelly. I'm gonna start with half that. I think I made a little too much. I can always add more. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off this and let this just kind of thicken up. Oh yeah, I can already feel that it's thickening up. And then once it cools a little bit, if I need to add a little more cornstarch, I can. I'm glad I texted her because I was tempted to leave those raspberry seeds in, but she requested that I take them out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this raspberry mixture through a fine mesh sieve. And we're gonna remove all these raspberry seeds. I think my sister-in-law made the right call to remove the seeds because there are a lot of seeds in there. And I wanna make sure I get all this goodness off the sieve. So here is our filling. And I think I want it just a touch thicker. So I'm gonna put this back on the stove with a little bit more of our cornstarch slurry. So I don't want this to ooze out of the cake when we cut into it. Probably gonna put that much in there. I'm gonna turn the heat back on. I just turned the stove off and I'm gonna let that jam just hang out there for a little bit while we move on to actually making the cake. And I need to read through this one more time before we get started just so that I do not miss anything. And I'm glad I did because it, this recipe stressed the importance of creaming the butter, oil, sugar, vanilla together for quite some time. So that's what we're gonna start with first. I just added my butter, now I'm gonna go ahead and add oil. So this recipe is interesting, it has both butter and oil. Now I'm gonna add my sugar. four large eggs. Oh, friend, the joy of watching your past self make a grave mistake when it comes to this cake. I am missing a step, and I'm gonna show you how I discover that I'm missing a step when it comes to this cake and how we are gonna overcome that mistake. Along with our vanilla, and my mom is almost out, so I'm gonna need to put that on her grocery list so she knows to get that next time. Lock that, and we're gonna mix this for a couple minutes. While that's creaming together, I picked up some flowers for my mom, and so I figured I could go ahead and get these in some water. I don't know where my mom keeps her vases. So I just pulled out a glass, and I'm gonna go ahead and just get them arranged in this water glass, because that's better than nothing. Typically, my mom and I do the majority of meal prep for parties the day before a party, but my mom wasn't able to be here, and so this is actually two days before the party, so I'm gonna get about half of the meals prepped on this day, and then on Sunday, the day of the party, my mom and I actually, my mom comes in from out of town, and we do a ton of the meal prep together. So it was really nice that my mom was able to come back from out of town so that we could, even with the travel conflicts, still be able to spend quite a bit of time in the kitchen together. In the time it took for our butter and eggs and cream mixture to mix together, we got a little bouquet made up for my mom. Let's get that one tucked in there. I think that's pretty. So for now, I'll just set this in this corner here, and it looks pretty. My mom's here. I thought you weren't supposed to be here until tomorrow. No, I got... You didn't know I was coming today? No. Well, I thought I was going to be here all by myself. Mom didn't get admitted to the hospital. Oh. So we only need one. So I caught an early flight because I didn't want to miss this party. <laughs> but I actually I don't think I'm going to help you cook. That's okay. I'm going to go take a shower. I had to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to <laughs> get this okay. flight. I didn't think we were going to be here until to either tonight or tomorrow. Hey, Dad. Love you. I was wondering why you said text Mom. <laughs> so did you get the breadcrumbs? Yes. Yep. Oh, awesome. Where are they? Oh, I left them in well, the car. Well, I, I just made that for you. Oh. Yeah. I just made that. Oh. <laughs> well, so go what? in. Let me do show <laughs> Yeah, I showed them. <laughs> Look, isn't my daughter a sweetheart? <laughs> well, I'm Thank making you. the cakes right now. Okay. Yes, I heard last night that one of the grandbabies really wants a cake. And if it didn't get done, 
Emily was going to buy one at the grocery. Oh, no. I was going yes, to that's one. what I told her. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. One way or the other. Yeah. You bake it, I'll decorate but it. But you were going to make two cakes or two desserts. I only have been planning to make one dessert. You making the raspberry? Yeah. Okay, I'll make the uh, rabbit cake. Okay. I can do that. It's easy peasy. Okay. All right. Awesome. I'm going to go... I'm oh, so not here. Surprised yeah, I, I didn't know my. I knew you were coming home, but I didn't know when. Okay, so I'm gonna get going on finishing this cake. For the dry ingredients, I'm going to measure out just the good old fashioned way. And I am going to, though, kind of fluff my flour, and then I'm gonna scoop my flour into my measuring spoon. I'm not sure where my mom has her kitchen scale. I did gift her a kitchen scale, but I don't know where it is. So I'm just gonna do it this way. And I just dropped my measuring spoon on the floor. So we need two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. That's all the leavening agent in here other than the eggs. I checked that a couple times. It just says baking soda, no baking powder. A lot of lemon juice. This is fresh squeezed lemon juice I'd made the other day. Let me get this in here. We're gonna put a whole half cup of that. Oh, thank you for the panko. And then two tablespoons of poppy seeds. And that's the cake right there. That's all the ingredients in there. It's at this point I start to question what is going on with this batter. I can tell when I'm pouring this batter into the cake pans that the butter is not fully incorporated into the batter. Even though I mixed the butter, the eggs, the sugar together for at least five minutes like the recipe said, and it's now that I'm questioning maybe I was not supposed to add the eggs in with the butter and the sugar at first. These do not look very full. So I hope we get a nice tall cake. The picture of this recipe looks like it's a nice tall cake, but it just doesn't seem like there's very much batter in there. But those are going to cook now for, divide batter evenly between the cake pans, bake for 22 to 25 minutes, or until a toothpick comes out clean. Easy peasy. I have a timer set for the cake and I don't think I'm gonna need the flour. Maybe I'll need the flour when I roll out the puff pastry, but I don't think I'm gonna need the sugar and the baking supplies anymore. So I'm gonna get these put away. And then my parents did bring me the panko so we can get going on the filling for the pork. But I think I want a simple, easy task next because the pork is gonna take a little bit more of my brain power to butterfly it and get all the components ready to stuff it and things like that. Our, be our pork sausage is almost done cooking. So I think what we're gonna do next is go ahead and do the cheesy potatoes because that I can do so easily. And I do need to get out baking dishes to put the cheesy potatoes in. I am doubling this recipe because this one is a family favorite. And we usually only have it once, if we're lucky, twice a year. It's usually a Christmas thing. And this year we're doing it for Easter too. So if it doesn't all get eaten the day of the party, people will enjoy taking this home. I think it should fit a double recipe in this big Pyrex. This is a big Pyrex. I think it's 15... It's 15 by 10 and a half, so it's big. In our family, we always called these cheesy potatoes, but I know that a lot of the recipes out online call them funeral potatoes, but they're the same thing. They are just a lot of really good things in a bowl mixed together. I already know I needed eight cups of cheese shredded. That was an eight cup bag, so I'm gonna put that whole thing. I'm gonna get two pints of sour cream in here. I do need to melt some butter. The only thing is I could not find onion flakes. Normally I add onion flakes to this. I usually melt the butter, put the onion flakes in the butter and kind of let them reconstitute together. That is what my aunt always did. But I didn't see that in my mom's cupboard, but I see onion powder. So I'm gonna put probably about two tablespoons of onion powder in here. Because normally each recipe I would put 
a quarter cup's worth of onion flakes. Now these are cubed hash browns. You can use shredded or cubed. I happen to have cubed on hand. My aunt always made it with shredded. And then one year she on accident bought the wrong thing and bought cubed and we liked it just the same. So we use shredded or cubed interchangeably just depending on what we end up picking up at the store or what we end up having in our house. And I did take these out of the freezer last night so that they wouldn't be frozen. It's always hard to mix this mixture when it's completely frozen. Now I'm gonna add quite a bit of black pepper. I just have the thought, are these called funeral potatoes because they're going to send you to your own funeral or because you bring them to a funeral? I always thought they were funeral potatoes because it was a common thing to bring as a casserole to a funeral. But then I thought, with all the ingredients, is it going to send you <laughs> to your own funeral? I don't know. Probably the casserole to the funeral, but we just added one cup of butter to those potatoes. And then I'm gonna add two cans of cream of chicken soup. I think some people use cream of cheese as well, but I've never done that. I've only ever used cream of chicken. Now I'm gonna mix all this together, and it is a whole lot easier to mix this when the potatoes are not frozen solid, because usually that's how I end up having to make this is with frozen hash browns. I think a wooden spoon is gonna be easier to mix this with instead of a spatula. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All of this should fit in this pan, I think. If not, I'll grab another one out. This is such an easy side and crowd pleaser and it just speaks of the holidays to us because we really only ever have this at the holidays. So now that I've got it all mixed together, I'm gonna to put it in my baking dish, kind of pat it down, cover it, pop it in the fridge, and we will bake this the day of our Easter celebration. Absolutely perfect timing. I just finished the cheesy potatoes and my timer went off for my cake. And I'm a little worried about the cake. Oh man. I'm gonna give it another two minutes. But I reread the recipe and I did do the steps incorrectly for this cake. I totally messed up. I was supposed to cream the butter and the sugar together for two minutes and then add the eggs one at a time. And the cake feels a little dense and rubbery to me when I feel the top. It's not super light and fluffy. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make a second one. I'm taking these cakes out of the cake pan and they actually feel pretty good. I think they might have turned out okay. I still think that I'm gonna go ahead and make the cake according to the directions. And worst case scenario, I will make a six layer cake instead of a three layer cake. But I'm really curious now to know if they are going to puff up more if I cream the butter and sugar together and follow the directions according to the directions as opposed to cooking it <laughs> the way that I cooked it. Okay. I was surprised when I thought that it said to mix the eggs and the butter and the sugar together because that's not common. And I was right to be surprised because that's not what it said. Now we're gonna cream this together for two minutes. My friend, this looks a lot more <laughs> light and fluffy than what it looked like before, so I definitely think we needed this step to make this cake correctly. I'm gonna get these cake pans prepared again. I just washed them. Mm. 
what the sugar is doing and why it got so light and fluffy is because the sugar kind of cuts into the butter and that is what creates air pockets and is gonna give us our lift that we need. So that makes a lot more sense. Now what we're gonna do is add our one egg at a time. There are no regrets in this mistake that I made on this day. I now have a very strong visual representation on why a certain step needs to happen in a cake recipe so that you get a light and fluffy cake. I learn more typically from when I mess something up or make a mistake than when I do something correctly every single time. I am way less likely to miss that step where I cream the butter and the sugar together before adding the eggs because on this day I have seen a really good example of what the batter looks like when you do the step and when you miss the step. And not only did we see what the batter looked like but we were able to bake it and you're going to see definitely the texture of the final cake is much much different now the first cake we made is edible but the second cake we made is got the texture that we're looking for in a nice fluffy cake so there's nothing wrong with making a mistake we can learn and overcome and just make it again that looks so much better I am so glad I decided to remake it. I almost didn't, but good choice. This is going to look a lot more fluffy now. I just went and told my mom, oh, that smells so good, that she didn't have any vanilla left, and she said she does have some of this Mexican vanilla. It's a clear vanilla, but my goodness, does that smell incredible. It smells very, very floral. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold that in to the batter. I'm gonna get this out of my way. Since I need to fold in the rest of the dry ingredients. And that looks completely different than what we had before. Very, very glad I decided to remake this. The oven has preheated now, so I've just been kind of tidying up and that looks a lot better. I was telling my mom what I did and she's like, oh yeah, you definitely want to cream the butter and the sugar together. That's pretty standard for cakes, but it's going to be kind of fun to see the difference between the one that I didn't do that and the one that I did. Now here is our jelly that we made that we're going to put in our cake. And I don't think that that first cake is a total loss. I was thinking it might be kind of fun to, if, if we can tell a big difference and we don't want to make a six layer cake, to turn them into cake pops. So I might just put those cakes in the freezer and then when I need a dessert next, I might pull them out and turn them into lemon poppy seed cake pops. All right, this jelly is gonna go in the fridge and the day that we frost the cake, We'll pull this out. These cakes look absolutely beautiful and my timer just went off. I reread my pork recipe. So we are ready to move on to, you know what? I think I'm gonna give those another one minute. And while I'm giving that another minute, I'm gonna go ahead and dice up two onions. We're just gonna use that residual grease from the pork sausage to cook our onions in. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. All right, I think our cakes are done now. They're nice and golden brown. I can just tell from touching them, this is kind of rubbery and pretty dense. 
and this is light and fluffy. And it felt like this from when it came out of the oven the first time. So I think I'm gonna turn these into cake pops maybe. I think that would be kind of a fun experiment. I've never made lemon poppy seed cake pops. I used to make cake pops all the time, but it has been quite some time since I have. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Super light and fluffy, pretty dense. I'm really glad I decided to remake those cakes because I was feeling a little discouraged, but it just was a matter of redoing it, no big deal. I told my mom about my cake pop idea and she thought that that would be really fun. And it helps getting that little bit of confidence boost before going into starting to fillet these pork tenderloins. So at one point, these two these are not tenderloins, these are pork loins, one piece, but my butcher cut it in half because if I was having a smaller dinner party, half would be more than enough. But we're having a big dinner party, so I need two of them. I haven't done this in a long time. I've got twine here. I'm gonna use all this twine, that's why I have it out here. If I wasn't using all this twine, I would just take a big long piece, cut it off, and then use it. Because we're going to cut this open, fillet it open, roll it back up and then tie it back together. So what I'm gonna do here, I did clean up some of the fat off the top, not all of it, because I want some of that to render out and baste our stuffed pork loin. The first thing I'm gonna do is take this loin and I'm going to put it fat side down toward the cutting board so that we can start to open up this loin. Now we are wanting to butterfly this open so that we've got a nice thin piece of pork loin that we can stuff with our stuffing. And we still need to finish making that stuffing, but I'll show you how we're gonna finish that in just a minute. But first, we're gonna take a sharp knife, that's very important, and we are going to have the pork loin perpendicular to us. We are gonna to work towards us, and we are going to take our knife one third the way up our pork loin, about three quarters of an inch above the cutting board, and slowly open up this pork loin. And we wanna make sure that we do not go all the way through the pork loin because we're not looking to cut this into two pieces, we're looking to get this into a thin piece of meat that is gonna be easily stuffed. So once we've opened it up the first cut, we're going to move it towards us and then we've got a thin piece and a little bit of a thicker piece. Now what we're gonna do with the thicker end is we're actually going to cut that in half so that we've got a even thickness throughout. So we've got one third, one third, one third, and that is going to be our pork loin butterflied. Going nice and slow is key to this because at no point do you want to cut all the way through the pork loin if at all possible. So once we had one done, I was gonna do the same thing to the second one. And these pork loins that I'm working with on this day are from a pastured farm. I purchased these, these pieces of meat from a local farmer. I bought the whole hog. And you can just see how much color they have in them. They're absolutely delicious. So now what we're gonna do is finish up our filling. So to our sauteed onions, I'm gonna add some seasoned panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of Dijon mustard, a bunch of garlic powder, and Italian seasoning, and I'm gonna mix that up. I looked for a ton of different recipes online, and the original recipe I was following when I started this cooking day was for a pork tenderloin, and I did not realize that it was for a pork tenderloin until I was at this stage, and I realized that I'm not working with tenderloin. I'm working with a pork loin, which is about four times the size of a pork tenderloin. So I end up kind of scrapping that recipe and I end up just making up my own and it turns out so delicious. So I take half of the panko breadcrumb mixture and I divide that equally between the two loins. And then I sprinkle the 
pork sausage that we cooked earlier over the top of these loins and I evenly distribute it throughout the two. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna roll up my loin so that it looks like the pork loin before we butterflied it open. It just now has a ton of really yummy stuffing mixture in it. Now what we need to do is actually truss up or dress up the loin. We're doing this for a few reasons. We are going to need this so that the pork loin doesn't just open up when we put this in the oven. We wanna make sure that the stuffing stays in the pork loin. And we also wanna make sure that we try to get an even thickness from one end of the loin to the other end of the loin so we have even cooking. Now the original recipe that I had printed off when I first started this cooking day was for the tenderloin and it called for bacon wrapped tenderloin. And I thought that because these are so much thicker than a tenderloin, I don't think I wanna bacon wrap them. So as I'm doing this, I'm trying to think of how do I want to finish off these loins before they go into the oven and as they cook, how do I wanna cover them? And I have the idea of making a maple Dijon glaze and oh my goodness friend it turns out so incredible and I'll walk you through that whole process as we get to it but the maple Dijon with the pork and the sausage and the onions oh it's so good it's so good this part is a little bit of a labor of love but it's worth it for a little bit of a fancier dinner. I think it's totally worth this effort. And this is a great recipe that you can prep ahead of time and have ready for you for the day of the party. So here I'm just finishing trussing up both of these loins. I used all of my mom's twine. It was perfect to get both of those rolled up. I'm looking for what I'm gonna put these in. I'm not sure what my mom would want me to bake these in, but I don't need to put them necessarily right now in what I'm gonna bake them in. I just need to get them in the fridge. And I was thinking as I was doing this, I think I'm gonna make a Dijon mustard maple glaze to go over, over the top. I was planning to do bacon wrapped, but the bacon I have is from the same hog that the sausage and this loin came from and it's a very meaty hog. And so I don't know if the bacon's gonna render down nice and crispy in the time it's gonna take for this to cook. So I think what I'm gonna do instead is make a glaze to go on the top. And I will do that. I'll just mix Dijon mustard, the homemade stuff with real maple syrup, put that on that and baste it while it's cooking in the oven. So these turned out so, Beautiful. I need to get them covered and into the fridge. They were like the perfect thawed. <laughs> they were still a little frozen, but I was able to get done what I needed to get done. And anytime I do this, I feel like all those years of watching butchers on YouTube and Martha Stewart doing fancy things like this for holiday meals paid off. So I need to get all of this counter really scrubbed really well and sanitized. Get these covered. That went relatively well. No major hiccups with that, which is fantastic. In the fridge this goes. I got this whole area prepped and cleaned and ready to go for the next recipe we're gonna prep. This one is gonna come together really easy and I'm excited to see how this turns out. So I have two cookie sheets here and I'm gonna line them with parchment paper. And this is gonna be one of two of the vegetable sides we're gonna have. And in here, I have some puff pastry. We're gonna make a asparagus gruyere cheddar Dijon tart. The hardest part of this recipe is going to be shredding the cheese for this recipe. It's gonna be a super easy recipe to have come together. I've already washed my asparagus and I cut the tough parts off. I do need to roll out these pastries sheets a little bit, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and take them off the cookie sheets for just a second here. 
I don't think I'm gonna need any flour for this because I already have the parchment paper down. I'm just gonna roll this out just a little bit. A dish like this feels like something Martha Stewart or Ina Garten would make. And so just like before, all those years of watching all those shows is paying off. So now what I'm gonna do is dock this pastry, leaving a one inch border. And you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna prep all the components of this and I'm not gonna assemble it till the day of the party. So I'm actually gonna put this on here, this on here. I'm gonna wrap this up because I'm worried that if I put the mustard on this, it's gonna get weird in the fridge. So I'm just gonna wrap this, put this in the fridge, and we're gonna prep the rest of the components. So the day of the party, all we have to do is assemble it. So I'm not gonna have to shred cheese or do anything like that. I have the other cookie sheet here. I'm gonna go ahead and grade my cheese right on here. And we will put this all together the day of the party. Now Gruyere does have a little bit of a rind, so I'm just gonna grate that part off. I'm gonna throw these cakes in the freezer. My mom and I have found it's much easier to frost cakes from frozen than fresh. So, because they're firm, they produce less crumbs, and it's just a lot easier. So these are going in the freezer. This puff pastry is gonna go in the freezer as well, and this is all prepped and ready to go. All I need to do is salt and pepper it and add the mustard and assemble. We've got our two different cheeses, which I think is gonna be way more cheese than we need. This is how much the recipe called for, but it's more cheese. Our asparagus is washed and ready to go. This is my little setup right here for the rolls. We've got our yeast, our sultanas or raisins. These need to go in the fridge. And then I am going to clean up and I am calling it a day for today. The sink is full of dishes. I have the dishwasher loaded. I was gonna make the salad dressing for the fruit salad, but I think I'm gonna wait on that. I know that sounds weird, a salad dressing for a fruit salad, but when I share with you the recipe, you will know why we like to put a salad dressing on our salad because it is absolutely incredible. We're not gonna prep any of the fruit until the day of, and I think that's it for today. So my mom is here. She's gonna actually make a cake, I think, tomorrow. My dad's gonna help clean up tomorrow, get the table set tomorrow, and then we will be back on Sunday the day of the party where we are going to frost cakes, we are going to assemble everything, put everything in the oven and see how well it all turns out. It's been a fantastic day. I am tired. I did all the shopping for today. Today I did the meal planning, mostly all yesterday. And so it's been a good couple days, a few couple busy days, but it's been a fantastic few days. And I am going to take tomorrow off and relax. And so I will see you back on Sunday. We are back at my mom's house and my mom is here and we are gonna start cooking. It is the day we are having this Easter party. Now, because I've been out of town um, and Becky had a prior commitment yesterday we're a little behind. Usually we have not much to do on the day of the party, but we have to be flexible and go with the flow. So today we've got some fun things that we are going to go ahead and just finish out for the party. I have set up over here. I'm gonna get the hot cross buns going. My mom last minute decided that she wanted to do a veggie tray. So she's gonna get going on that. We need to make the fruit salad. 
I'm gonna decorate the cake. My mom yesterday made a bunny cake. Oh, it's so cute. I'll get it, I can't get it out of the refrigerator because it has whipped cream is the, the final layer with coconut and it will like soften too much, but I'll get it out and you'll see it later. I haven't even seen it yet, so it's I'm excited really about it. So my mom yesterday, she went ahead and got a countdown timeline all set e all set and ready to go but i'm going to get going on the bread first because that needs to rise for at least between the two risings we've got two hours worth of rise time so i'm going to get going on that first the first thing i need to do for the hot cross buns i've never made hot cross buns before is actually warm up three cups of milk and melt a stick of butter so i'm going to do that first uh, neither one of us had any ranch dressing and the grandkids like ranch for their vegetables. So I have a ranch seasoning mix that I put together from a recipe from Penzi Spices. And I'm just gonna mix some of that in sour cream and we'll call that ranch. That's actually how I prefer my ranch dip is the sour cream ranch. I do too, I don't like yogurt. It's, it's too, you can't get that bitter taste out of it. And I'm not a fan of buttermilk necessarily either because it has that same kind of bitter texture. Yeah. So this recipe calls for rapid rise yeast. So I do not need to actually proof the yeast before I get started. So I'm just gonna measure out my flour because this is what the recipe says to do directly into the mixer. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shake because when I opened it, all the herbs are up at the top and all the heavier spices are at the bottom. So I'm gonna give it a shake and then I'm just gonna dump in half and see what it tastes like and add more if needed. This is six cups, I need eight and a half. Seven. Eight. I'm gonna put eight and a quarter, and if I need to add a little bit more, I can. Now we're celebrating Easter on Palm Sunday, and we've done that for several years because the kids all have in-laws in town, or most of them, and that way they can not have to choose which event to go to, or they can have their own personal Easter celebration uh, without a conflict of schedule. That has worked really well for our family. And who doesn't like two Easter dinners? Just not on the same day. So I'm putting six teaspoons of rapid rise yeast into this bowl. And I'm gonna mix that together along with, oh, that's my butter popping in the microwave. That is really good. That is way better <laughs> than bottled ranch. Is that, did you make that up or yes. did you buy? Yes, well, I didn't make it up, it's a recipe. Oh, from Penzi's? Um, Penzi Spice is not from Penzi's. Oh, I see. I can send it to you and you can- Put the uh, link down? Yeah, you can put the link down for it. Um, I like it way better because it doesn't have that bitter flavor of buttermilk or this, like yogurt. like Yes. Yeah. It's not sweet by any means. It's just really fresh and herby, if that's a word. <laughs> we can make it up. My milk needs to be a little bit warmer. I am doubling this recipe because we have 20-ish people coming, and that way we can get at least one bun per person. And I'm gonna make two flavors. So I just added cinnamon. Now I'm gonna add my salt. And Becky, I'm gonna stick this empty container back in the fridge because we may not use it all. That's a good idea. Now I need the zest of two oranges. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my warmed milk. And I'm gonna get half of this kind of, or I'm gonna get all this mixture kind of half mixed together. 
And then I don't think I'm gonna be able to knead all of this double recipe in my mom's KitchenAid, so I'm gonna cut it in half and then we'll add raisins to half and craisins to the other. I have a Ziploc bag I keep in my freezer. It currently has, I think, three chicken carcasses. And I'm gonna put all the celery trimmings uh, directly in this bag. I don't care the texture of it when it's frozen because I'll use this whole bag for um, making broth. That's a good idea. And I'll probably do the same with the carrot chunks. That's a great idea. Before I separate the dough, I need to go ahead and mix in two eggs. So I'm gonna get that in there. And here's the carrot peels. So half of our family does not like raisins, so that's why I'm gonna divide this and I'm gonna put half with cranberries. This dough is very sticky. The recipe said it would be, and if we need to add more flour, we can. But I can't mix it in the KitchenAid very easily to knead it to see if it needs more flour quite yet because the KitchenAid is a little too full with this double recipe. So I'm gonna get this dough in here, and then I'm gonna use this dough scraper to kind of divide it in two as evenly as I can and put it back in the KitchenAid mixer. The That's a great idea. Yeah, and then that way we're not bogging the KitchenAid mixer down too much with a double recipe. And I want to thank all of you who commented that I can make an adjustment on my KitchenAid so that the hook doesn't hit the bottom of the bowl and make the clanking and the whole thing vibrate and rattle. I didn't watch the video the last time I used it. I just fiddled around with it. And I think I got it. I might have it a little too high, <laughs> but it isn't clanking and banging. Thank you, I really appreciate that. A dough can look way too sticky and way too on the wet side and you just keep kneading it and kneading it and as the gluten develops, then it's not as sticky and that's what this recipe said. You need to knead it for a good five minutes before you need to know if you need to adjust the flour ratio. So that's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna get the cranberries in here. So here is one cup and I'm gonna add another half a cup of craisins. These are really fresh craisins. Get those in there, and now I'm just gonna turn the mixer on and let this knead for a good five minutes. Just knead this by hand while that is kneading in the KitchenAid. So my mom got the vegetable plate done. It looks beautiful. It's half pickles because my family likes pickles. Yeah, I, I'm sure that all the pickles will, will be gone, half the olives, and some of everything else. But <laughs> all the pickles will be gone for sure. That's a whole jar. And then would you be willing, mom, when you're doing that, would you be willing to cover this too? Because our yeah. first dough looks good. My dad just got here and he's excited about this. He's going to finish some of the housekeeping things that I didn't get to yesterday. I'm gonna sweep the front porch and clean the powder room. Those were on that list on the timeline to get done. He came in and asked what he could do, and that would be a great help so that we can focus on the food. So this dough recipe I think does better kneading by hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the cranberry one, and I'm gonna go ahead and knead this one by hand as well. Question. And go ahead. Do you want this across the top or touching the dough? Across the top, please, because it's going to rise, hopefully. <laughs> okay. You don't want a uh, tea towel? You can use whatever whatever you want. If you want to okay. grab a tea well, towel. Well, I do have tea towels yeah. that are clean. We can use that for yeah. the next one since I already cut that off. Yeah, absolutely. And then my mom's going to go run and put the veggies out into the outside fridge. And so she's going to go ahead and grab the pork that we made 
so that it can come up a little bit to room temperature. We do not want to put it in the oven from the refrigerator. We want it to warm up just a little bit. And then I need this KitchenAid to make the frosting for the cakes. So I'm gonna get this bowl soaking so that I can scrub it out really well. I'm also gonna get this dough hook soaking as well. This bread smells incredible. Now the recipe called for cinnamon and allspice. I only put cinnamon in it because I wasn't sure how the allspice and craisins would go together. I knew cinnamon and craisins would go well together, but I wasn't sure about the allspice. I think that's a good call. Okay, no good. Allspice. I did not consult my mom. I just kind of made an executive decision on that, so I'm glad you think so. Yeah, I think just kneading this by hand to finish is kind of what this recipe needs. It smells really good. I like the smell of this one. Oh, that does. It's great. So this needs to rise for at least an hour and a half. Got another bowl here. I'm putting a little bit of spray on it just so that the top doesn't dry out. I'm cleaning up the floury mess. My mom's getting out all the fruit for the fruit salad. And then I'm gonna get going on the frosting to make for the cake that we need to decorate. My mom's kind of inspired me to become a better cake baker and cake decorator because she always does such a good job. I'm really excited to see how this bunny cake turned out. She used my grandma's Easter cake recipe, my dad's mom's recipe, and I have that written up. So I think I can link that recipe down below for you. So the raspberries and blackberries are gonna be for decorating the cake. And then whatever I don't end up using for the cake, then we can just put in the fruit salad. Okay, shall I put these in the refrigerator in here then? Um, I'm gonna get going on the cake right now. All right, then I'll just leave them out. If you think they'll be fine out. Okay. Hey, I saw this trick one time for getting the top off your pineapple. If you just unscrew it, well, there we go. Oh, and it works. Wow, that's amazing. We're gonna make a honey mint. Um, Salad dressing. Honey mint and lime. I knew there was one more thing in <laughs> oh. it. Honey mint and lime salad dressing. Some of us really love it. It's originally a recipe from my daughter-in-law, uh, but there's a couple, not so much. So, oh, I didn't know that people didn't like it. Uh, well, pop up. Oh, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna do one bowl with a dressing and one bowl without. without. That's a good idea. Now that I've peeled it, then I, I uh, cut it in slices, like this. And then I can stack the slices and cut the core out all at one time. Mom, your cake is adorable. Oh Isn't my goodness. it darling? It's so cute. Isn't it darling? I'm very happy with it. Did you do that last night? Yeah, I did last night because so I, I didn't want to be fussing in the kitchen on top of each other. And I found the lemon juice. I put it out in the outside fridge. So this cream cheese for the cream cheese frosting, my mom just took it out of the refrigerator probably 20 minutes ago. So I'm gonna pop it in the microwave for about 20 seconds. Oh yeah, that's better. I don't want it melty or anything. I just don't want it refrigerator cold. Now I need three quarters of a cup of butter. I just Googled how many cups of powdered sugar are in a 32 ounce bag of powdered sugar because I need 10 cups of powdered sugar for this recipe. And there are seven and a half cups of powdered sugar in one standard size bag. I can just pour this whole thing in here. And I'm gonna grab a towel and put a towel over the top of this when I turn this on. Seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half. 10. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna put some lemon juice in here instead of vanilla. And I'm gonna turn this on. Probably should have whisked the butter and cream cheese together first, but I forgot. So this will be fun. Okay, I had a nectarine here and I went around and cut slices pole to pole and then around the equator, this is definitely not a cling-free uh, fruit. I'm having a hard time getting them off. Really, I can only do one slice at a time. It might be that it's not as ripe. Uh, it would probably come off easier if they were riper. And the way I cut a cantaloupe or a uh, melon is I cut uh, slices like this. Now, if I'm serving it just for a side as a, for the family, I will cut it uh, here, because I'm not putting it in a fruit salad. And then people just take a spear and put it on their plate. But if I'm cutting it for a fruit salad, it's faster for me to cut the same, cut it the same way, then cut like that all the way down. And then it's one swipe. And I'm not gonna do it here because it's gonna go all over the counter. But I'll do it over the bowl and then I'll all fall in the bowl. I mean, maybe you have a faster way, but this has been the way I've done it for a long time because it, it's pretty fast for me. So I have the frosting made. I just pulled out some of the things for the next couple recipes. One, I pulled out the cake that I'm gonna be frosting and the asparagus tart. So I prepped that the other day and it's gonna be really easy for us to pull that recipe together. And my mom and I really like to decorate cakes when they're completely frozen. It just makes for less crumbs in the frosting. And so that's what I'm gonna get going to now. This was a special request. Oh, it looks like I forgot the berry sauce. Oh, it's over there for my sister-in-law. So we're gonna celebrate her birthday and Easter. And she requested lemon poppy seed cake. And this one turned out beautiful after a little bit of my disaster. <laughs> we'll just make cake pops with those later. Yeah, that'll be They're good. They're in the freezer. Thank you. And when I get on Amazon next time, this is the size I normally buy. I'm going to buy some that are wider and taller. Then you can put the whole frosting in it. Oh. Um, but you need these when you're doing multiple colors and things like that. Yeah. Wider and longer is easier to fill for sure. I had my mom give this lemon cream cheese frosting a taste test and she gave it two thumbs up. So now I'm going to go ahead and fill my piping bag with this cream cheese frosting. And this is what I've been looking forward to this entire cooking marathon is getting to this point. It did take us a little bit to, to get to this point, but I've been really enjoying cake decorating lately and I want to become a more confident cake baker because I'm starting to really enjoy the cake decorating part and I also want to enjoy the baking part as well. So I've always kind of leaned toward enjoying cooking more because I understand cooking techniques better than I understand baking techniques. So I am more confident in my cooking skills to be able to ad lib, adjust recipes, and I feel that I can be a little bit more creative when it comes to cooking than I can when it comes to baking because I don't understand the baking techniques as much. And this was a huge learning opportunity when it came to this cake because obviously the first time we tried making this cake, it was a little bit of a flop. We can still salvage it, but it was not a fluffy cake. And so I learned something really valuable that I need to make sure if the recipe says mix the sugar and butter together that I do that before I add the eggs. And I'm not gonna make that mistake, hopefully, again. And so I just am excited that I'm starting to become more of a baker because then the more confident and the more baking I get under my belt, the more I will then be able to get more creative when it comes to flavors and decorating and things like that. Because if I have a good understanding of the techniques, then I can play around with flavors and textures and stuff like that. So this was so fun to me. I have never made a cake where I fill it with a jam before and where I pipe something around the outside to hold my jam in. And I've seen this on videos 
I don't know if you in the, I don't know what it would have been the mid and late 2000s where cake decorating on the Food Network was very, very popular. And you would see cake ba cake bakers do this technique all the time. Right here, what I'm trying to do is, should I have the this be the top or the other side be the top? And my mom said this should be the top. So I went with what she said. But this felt so fun to me to be able to fill this cake with a homemade jam or jelly, whatever you want to call it, and then frost it. And it felt really empowering to me when I learn a new skill or when I conquer a new technique when it comes to cooking and now baking. It's just really fun to get a little bit more confidence. So even though this kind of started off a little bit on the wrong foot, when it comes to this cake, we are not ending on a wrong foot. We are ending on a high note. And this is the fun part where we get to see all of this work kind of come together into not only a really beautiful cake, but also a very delicious cake for most of my family. Not everyone likes lemon desserts. That's why my mom made a second one. So I'm going to transfer my cake. This helps that my mom has the cardboards for it onto her cake pan. And we are about to sear the pork. Oh, I didn't get that quite in the middle. Here, you can do it. Did you put frosting on the cake pan? Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Thanks, Mom. It's a little slippery. Why don't you... I mean... I'm going to put fruit around the bottom. Okay, but be... Before you um, do it, push it back. See, it's not, it's like Here. leaning. It's leaning. So push it so it's not leaning. And then I you can know. fix your frosting. And we'll put steaks in it. Like that? Oh, because it's lopsided? It's, yeah, it's going to tip. It's going to slide. Oh, really? Yes. That's Wait. another ask me how I know. My I, mom is the cake baker in the family. And she has informed me that my cake is leaning. It's and gonna slip because all that juicy layers are there. So we're gonna push it back so that it's upright. We're going to break these little skewers a little bit below the top of the cake, push it upright, stick the skewers <laughs> in, and then fix the frosting. Well, thanks for helping me with this. Well, when I very first started baking fancy cakes, one actually split in three pieces and oh, gosh. went down the sides. It was, you were little. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little hard to tell, but this cake is leaning this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this layer back oh. up. Where's the, there's one more spatula we had. Did you, where is it? Do you know? Uh, Let me get you. There was one of the, these big blade ones you had. As I'm pushing the top, the bottom is sliding, so I'm going to do it on. <laughs> so much fur. There, see? Is that better? Oh, yeah, that looks Does better. Does that look better? Yeah, that looks better. Okay, whoops. I'm going to hold it while you stick the steaks in. Okay. So I was just missing this piece. And we, we can push it in with the end. Yeah. There we go. There's three of them, so put them like a third of the way around. And right below is the piece I broke off. You can use to poke the rest of that in. Okay. Perfect. Thank okay. you. So See, now, now we can that'll fix hold it. it. Yeah. Now fix your frosting how okay. you want. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh yeah, that's actually staying. That's yes. better. Yes. Okay. This is my big electric skillet, and this is the trick that I have done to protect it. This is the second one. The first one got scratched because I keep it under the cooktop and with crock pots and rice cookers and stuff. And it has, one got scratched a little bit. So that one is in the tent trailer, or in the trailer for camping. Um, and I've used an old pillowcase, run a drawstring through it, and that protects it from Brilliant. being cut up. The first time I used that, my mom wasn't here and I was making the tortillas, I thought that it came with that. <laughs> I didn't realize no. that you had this made is that. An, this is an old pillowcase that's stained and hasn't been on a pillow in decades. <laughs> now it's on the um, skillet. Where did that recipe go? Medium. Just... Oh, yes, that's very pretty. Very pretty. Thank you. Oh, 
I think you put um, lemons. Yeah, I had little quarter, quartered lemon slices, and I stewed them up on edge here with a, a blueberry in between each one. It, it was very beautiful. Oh, but look at what happened to that. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I guess I pick it up with my hands. Oh, yeah, it's too heavy for that spatula. Should I put some raspberries on the top, too? Uh, you could, between the straw, I don't know, wherever. Yeah. I've seen where people cut the blackberries in half, and that's really pretty, so let's see what that looks like. The like problem with doing that, if you put it on there, is it bleeds. Oh, okay. So maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe we'll no. just do that. Just like that. Cake's done. Should I put that in the fridge, Mom? Yes, you should. Okay. So now I'm gonna get the asparagus tart ready to go into the oven. And I can get this ready and then pop it into the fridge and then it can just sit in the fridge until we're ready to bake it. These asparagus cheese tarts turned out incredible and they were so easy and I will absolutely make this again multiple different ways using different produce, especially this summer when it's coming out of the garden. Now, the one thing I did learn is there's probably no need to prep the puff pastry in advance because it didn't take long to dock it so that it doesn't puff up everywhere. And then I could have just kept it in the original packaging, but I was trying to think through what I could do to save us time on this day. And it did save a little bit of time, but in the grand scheme of things, I think just to save on packaging, I would just leave it in the original package, open it up the day of the party, roll it out, put the little holes in it, and then go from there. So the base layer is the puff pastry, and then I took some Dijon mustard, and I just brushed Dijon mustard, leaving a one inch border around the outside edge. And then I took this very thin asparagus. I think the key here is getting a nice thin asparagus and laying that in a single file layer along the top. And I already pre-washed this asparagus and cut the tough end off so that it was ready to go. If I did this again for a party, that is totally worth doing in advance, but just prepping the pastry I don't think was necessary. It was nice though having my cheddar cheese and my Gruyere cheese already shredded so that I could just go ahead and put a little layer on the bottom, put my vegetables, and then top it with more cheese. And I can think of so many different ways you could adapt this when the summer fresh produce is coming out of the garden for a very easy dinner on a day you've spent all day in the garden. So now that that's done, I went ahead and I popped that into the refrigerator and we'll bake that right before people come. And while the pork is still searing on the griddle, I'm just rotating it as it gets a nice brown crust. I'm gonna go ahead and get going on the salad dressing for the salad. And my mom is gonna make the maple Dijon glaze for the pork. So the pork recipe, I kind of just made up. I took about three or four different recipes I found online and I married them together to come up with a simple recipe that kind of fit my needs when it came to this party. And we're just going to do a simple equal parts honey and Dijon mustard glaze. And while my mom's doing that, I'm making a salad dressing, which I will link the salad dressing recipe down below. And all it is is equal parts lime juice, honey, and then a whole bunch of fresh mint. You blend that in your blender and that is your salad dressing. It is so delicious and it really does elevate any simple fruit salad you make. The first time I had it, I was blown away. I was like, what in the world is on this fruit salad? And it is so yummy. Once it's blended, we're just gonna throw that onto our salad, the one that we're putting the salad dressing on. And then I went ahead and I tossed the most of the ingredients in that dressing and then I added the berries at the end and just kind of gently tossed those so they didn't get totally crushed in the salad. And then in the meantime, we're just continuing to sear the outside of our pork so that it can go into the oven with a nice crust. Felt like it got really hectic there for a minute. <laughs> we are feeling the pressure of doing a lot more prep on the day of the party than we're used to. The meat is now seared and this is gonna be going in the oven very shortly. 
we have done. Let me, do you have a pin over here, mom? Pin. I think we've now done everything except cook everything. My mom is getting out some. Question. Yes. I have a nine by 13 or I have a double size. Do you want, can you put all the rolls in one pan? I think it was 12 rolls per recipe. Okay, then, then um, it, I'll use this one. And okay. you can do it all in one pan. Okay. So the thing I'm gonna do right now is roll out these rolls because they, the dough is ready and it needs to do a second proof before we can actually put them in the oven. We've got the asparagus tart ready to go in the oven as well. I'm gonna spray this just so that we don't have stickage on here. And it is 1.41 right now. People are set to arrive around three o'clock and then dinner is supposed to be served around four o'clock. And then after dinner, my parents have an Easter egg hunt all set up. I don't think it's supposed to rain. My mom is grabbing the roaster pan for the pork. Let's see if I can do the math on this. This dough is very, very beautiful. Is this big enough, do you think? Oh, they'll, yeah. be, they'll be touching each other. I think that's okay. Do they need to be up off the bottom? I don't, it doesn't matter, I don't think. Okay, then I'll take this out and I'll have a little more room. And then can we use your thermo pin? Is it charged? Yes. Perfect. So my mom has this really cool meat thermometer. I actually got it from um, uh, my children and it is the coolest thing. I had so many meat thermometers you put a battery in and they only have a, seems like a limited lifespan. Um, this one, you charge the block periodically. Oh, you don't even charge the metal piece? No, you put it in there and it has a little charger in here. Oh wow, that's So cool. every time you put it back, it charges and this little green light tells you oh, that, that's cool. that it's charging. Um, and it's uh, linked to your phone. So it tells you the, the temperature that it is. You put in what it is you're cooking and it sets it to your preference of rare, medium rare, so forth. And it gives you a warning when you're a few minutes away from taking it out. Um, it's just been a lifesaver. Becky can link it for you. Our last big party, when we did two or three different meats, I asked my daughter-in-law who has this as well. Hers came with two. Oh, so really? You, could, you don't have to keep moving them around. Oh, that's nice. And so we had both going at, I think we had the turkey and maybe prime rib or something. I must not have been there that day because I didn't realize that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of times when we do big holiday dinners, if you've been here for <laughs> those, we do have usually two different proteins. Let's see, I can, oh, I can put oh, them yeah. this way. Yeah. Perfect, then they won't be touching each other. There you go. It smells good. Oh, they really do. Do we have the oven preheated? Uh, we have, we had to get the rolls out. I'll preheat it right now. I'm not sure how we're gonna make this oven work. I didn't think through all of that. Well, we could okay, cook. Well, the asparagus is pretty fast, in and out, right? It's about 15 minutes, but we could yeah. cook that now because the asparagus tarts, I think we could eat at room temperature. Okay. I don't think they need to be piping hot. I don't think all these are gonna fit in this one. Well, I can get another pan out. Did I roll that? That's 12. That's nine. Oh. Well, maybe you put them close together, four. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll work. That is a big pan. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Emily got it for me. Oh, nice. Is that what you use to make the, um, the bunny? Uh, no, they're circles. Oh, I made them at two, two circles. One was the head and the other one cuts for the bow and the ears. Yeah, they, we should be able to get them all in here because they uh, touch each other. We're gonna get the dishwasher going and try to get it run and unloaded before people get here so that after dinner, 
we can just load up dishes. Usually the sons-in-laws do the majority, and my dad do the majority of the dishes after dinner. The dough with the cranberries is definitely stickier than the dough with the raisins. There might be more sugar on the outside of the... Well, they might uh, coat them. Yeah. My mom is working on getting the two different ovens preheated for the different things we're going to be cooking. And while I finish rolling out these rolls, I do just take a glance at the recipe to see how long they're supposed to rise for their second rise before we put these in the oven. So this dinner party is about to just come together really quickly since we've now kind of gotten all the components ready to actually go into the oven and be cooked. I wanted to show you this cake and have my mom explain it to you how she made it before people start arriving and the craziness happens. We are just about to put a bunch of stuff into the oven, but look how cute this cake is. The original recipe came from Mark's mom and it was called wedding cake. Uh, we changed it to Easter cake because I made it most often in, at Easter in a sheet pan and turned it into the empty tomb cake but I had a granddaughter who really wanted a rabbit cake this year. So I made the same recipe as a rabbit. It's two eight inch circles, one obvious. The other is the circle with the ears cut out. Oh, so, so this <laughs> is one circle. This is the middle of the circle. One ear is one oh, side, one I ear see. is the other side. So cute. Now it's a yellow cake that I, a recipe I use all the time. But instead of using milk, I used the juice from the crushed pineapple. So it's a, a yellow cake with a pineapple tinge flavor to it. Then the next layer is a banana pudding and cream cheese uh, whipped together. I think we made this recipe last year together. Yes, and we made it as the empty tomb cake. Yes. But this time I made it like this. And the so concern cute. was that the filling might run off. Yeah. So I did the trick Becky did with cream cheese, a, a frosting, and I piped all around the edges of where I'm going to put the filling. But it turned out the filling was quite thick and it wouldn't have fallen off. Next time I won't bother. Okay. So then it's, it starts out with the uh, filling and then the crushed pineapple that you have squeezed the juice out and used in the cake layer goes on it. And then whipped cream. And I used the a uh, coconut, separated into three, uh, tinted this blue and that pink. And I had the funnest time in Winco in the bins because I didn't need a whole bag. Yeah, did you pick up six? No, I had a handful, maybe, maybe a dozen. <laughs> That's funny. But anyway, I was talking with the gal who was refilling it and um, I said, I'm looking for something bigger than the melting circles. Mm. And I said, you know, there's these gold coins but oh, I didn't want to open it. I mean, I couldn't open it because I didn't buy it yet to find out if the coin hat was stamped. So you know what she did? She was such a sweetheart. She just opened one up and she said, well, it's a little bit, but I think you can get away with it. So those are I gold mean, coins? These are gold coins. Yeah. There's a little, you can sort of see it. And I cut this one in a third for the nose. And then I happened to have some black gel frosting from some other project. But that is the bunny cake for the particular granddaughter that wanted a bunny cake. Because the frosting is, is it just whipped cream? Yes, it's whipped cream with coconut. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put that back in the fridge until we cut into it so that it doesn't melt. But that is Did really cute, Mom. Good job, Mom. So we are officially starting to put stuff into the oven. I've got the tarts, and these are going to go into the bottom one at 400. my flour and water here. I'm going to whisk this together just using a fork and make a paste. I think my sister last year made sourdough hot cross buns. 
But she, I don't think, is making anything. No, she's time. about to have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Any day now. Any day. Okay. So I'm just going to use a Ziploc bag this time. I was going to use that Ziploc bag to pipe on the crosses, but the corners were not pointed. So I ended up grabbing one of my mom's piping bags to pipe this on and it worked perfectly. Now these buns still need to rise for about 40 minutes. My mom and I though wanted to kind of get all the dishes washed up and put away and the kitchen cleaned. And so I went ahead and I piped these crosses on before they were fully risen. And I was a little worried about it after I did it. I thought, oh, maybe I should have waited until they were fully proofed before I put this on. But it did not matter. It They still rose perfectly fine and the crosses stayed in place once they were ready to go into the oven. So now that that's done, basically all of the prep work is done. We are just going to be cooking everything and heating everything through and putting the final touches on everything. So my mom is getting the thermal pin in the roast and she did put the glaze on it. We end up basting the roast about four times with that glaze and it takes about an hour and 20 minutes for those roasts to fully cook through. Now I'm gonna go ahead and top my cheesy potatoes with a crunchy topping. I originally was going to put a cornflake topping on those potatoes, but I did not realize that when I was at the store, I bought sugar-coated cornflakes, and so my mom had some potato chips, so we used those instead. My aunt would always interchange either cornflakes or potato chips, and so we went ahead and just used potato chips so we weren't putting a sweet cornflake on top of the potatoes. Now all the cooking's done, so we take a minute to go ahead and clean the counters. My dad sweeps for us, and then we were able to get the dishwasher unloaded so that when the dinner is done, we can just load the dishes up. One thing my mom did the night before is she did set those tables the night before so that we didn't have to worry about the tables at all. All we're worrying about right now is making sure that everything gets cooked properly. So here you can kind of see what the thermal pin looks like on the phone. And the cool thing is it actually tells you what the oven temperature is and the internal temperature. So you can kind of gauge how hot or cold your oven is. And then we are ready to put everything else in the oven. So the Rolls have now risen properly and people are starting to arrive at this point. We went ahead and we got a simple cranberry ginger punch mixed together. I had some homemade cranberry juice I brought. We just topped that off with some punch and ginger ale and then put some ice in there and then that was an option for people. And then the other one we end up filling with just ice water if people want ice water. And then here we're glazing the pork roast again. This was so fabulous. It was so easy and delicious, and it just felt like the perfect thing to have with this Easter dinner. Now, here are our asparagus cheese tarts. The recipe did say to top the tart with a balsamic glaze. Not everyone in my family are huge vinegar fans. I love vinegar, but half of the family is not huge vinegar fans, so I end up only putting putting the glaze on one of them and then the other one we end up leaving just fine and then my mom just uses some scissors to cut it into individual serving sizes here are what the hot cross buns look like coming out of the oven and the recipe did call to put an apricot glaze on the buns well we didn't have an apricot glaze my mom had some peach jam that a friend had made her and so we thought that that would work just fine. So I end up actually popping that jam in the microwave for about 30 seconds so that it's nice and soft and spreadable. And then I spread the jam over the top of the buns and we serve that with softened butter. And they were so good. My favorite were the cranberry. My dad's favorite were the raisin. And I'm really glad I did half and half because people definitely had a preference on which one they liked better. Now my sister is carving the pork loin and we did let these loins rest for a good 20 to 30 minutes before we carved them and they turned out so yummy. 
My sister-in-law brought a green bean side dish where she topped it with a Dijon vinaigrette and it was absolutely wonderful. And then she topped nuts on top of that. We've got our cheese tart, our cheesy potatoes, our roast, and the rolls. This dinner was so yummy and we really all enjoyed it. It's so nice when my family can get together and sit down and enjoy a nice meal together. If you enjoyed hanging out with my mom and I in the kitchen, we have lots of videos where we spend time prepping for huge parties. So if you want to watch more of my mom and I prepping for huge parties, I can pop some videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Good night, friend.